the ending of Kingdom Hearts 3 pretty much placed Sora in quite a unique situation. And while a lot of Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind and even previous Kingdom Hearts games have touched on the concept of an afterlife or a purgatory in the Kingdom Hearts universe, I think that Kingdom Hearts 4 and a larger part of the Lost Master arc will explore these concepts in a more nuanced way. And this includes having a more frank conversation of what Sora is pretty much set up to go through in this next arc. Welcome back y'all, this is your girl Empowered Is, and today we're going to talk about the concept of an afterlife and just where Quadratum and more importantly Sora reside on the spectrum between being alive and fully passing on to either a fully realized afterlife or to some form of permanent sleep. So before we go on, obviously there will be major spoilers as to what happened to Sora in Kingdom Hearts 3 and while I've usually made these videos from a standpoint of looking forward from the end of Kingdom Hearts 3 into the Lost Master arc, I didn't want to inadvertently reveal major spoilers to anyone who's new to the series who might randomly come across this video. Okay, so right out the gate, I think it's pretty safe to say that Sora is in fact dead or somewhere beyond the veil that separates the living and the dead. And this is pretty much evidence with the ending scene of Kingdom Hearts 3, where Sora disappears from existence and had been fading from existence throughout the story of Remind. Not to mention Sora is nowhere in any of the realms on the plane of existence, not only is he not in the realm of light, but he's also not in the realm of darkness or between. And the secret movies at the end of Kingdom Hearts 3 and Remind show that Sora is somewhere and he's conscious. So once we see Sora again in the teaser trailer for Kingdom Hearts 4, we learn that he's in Quadratum, which is referred to as similar to an afterworld of Strelitzia. So we're already getting the sense that this is in fact the case that Sora is somewhere closer to the dead than the living. But I'm not 100% convinced that this means that Sora is fully dead or passed on, and I'll explain why a bit later in this video. All in all though, I think it's very safe to say that Sora is no longer on the plane of existence where his friends are. And this is further shown with the people we see him come across so far. Izora, who in Sora's reality is actually a video game character, and Strelitzia, who we saw was struck down back in Union Cross. And while I do think that Yozora isn't necessarily in the exact same place as Sora and Strelitzia, it's still interesting to point out that so far, Sora has come across someone who's supposed to be fictional for all intents and purposes, and someone who's supposed to be long gone. So I think that means that wherever and whatever Quadratum is supposed to be, it's at this very interesting intersection of fiction, purgatory, and a more permanent death. This likely means that Sora might be beyond the veil of the living, but not completely dead. Like I said before, I think Sora, and to a broader extent Quadratum, lies somewhere on the spectrum between life and permanent sleep or death. And we've actually gotten hints of how this might play out not only in the Kingdom Hearts 3 secret movies, but also in a very pivotal moment in Union Cross. This may also explain why Strelitzia is still within this plane as well, as opposed to making it to the final world. So if Sora is in fact beyond the veil and Quadratum, does that mean that Riku was also able to travel to that very same place so that he'd be able to find Sora? And I think the answer to that is actually no. Riku did make it to Quadratum, but he's likely in the section of Quadratum that's still considered within the land of the living. And so there are a couple of hints that point to the fact that Riku and Sora are in the same place geographically, but on different planes. One hint that points to the idea that Riku and Sora are still separated in some form is where each one lands when they get to Quadratum. It seems that Sora landed on the side of Quadratum that represents the Shibuya city of Tokyo, Japan, while Riku landed on the side of Quadratum that represents the Shinjuku city of Tokyo, Japan. And while in real life Shibuya and Shinjuku are not that far from each other, I think there is a significant reason that Sora and Riku landed in these different cities as opposed to landing in the same city. So it might be the case that the Shibuya side of Quadratum is actually the afterworld side or the side that's beyond the veil, while the Shinjuku side of Quadratum is still within the land of the living. Another critical hint that points to this idea is the color overlay in the secret movies in Kingdom Hearts 3. Specifically in the secret movie where we see Sora and Riku each wake up in Quadratum, we see Sora's side with more of a red-orange gradient in the shading of his scenes while we see Riku's side with more of a blue and white gradient in the shading of his scenes. And we also see Yozora on the same side of Quadratum where Riku wakes up. Additionally, in the secret movie after Yozora's secret boss fight when you win, Yozora wakes up back in Quadratum, but his surroundings still kind of carry that brighter blue and white gradient. Whereas in the teaser trailer for Kingdom Hearts 4, the Shibuya crossing side of Quadratum that Sora and Strelitzia are on takes on a bleaker look, where it's almost a more neutral palette. 
So again, this difference in colors might indicate that while both Sora and Riku are in Quadratum, Sora still might be unreachable because he's beyond the veil that separates the living from the dead, while Riku is still on the side of the living. But just because Sora might be beyond the veil for now, there could be a way for him to cross back over to the side of the living at some point in the Lost Master arc. And I think this is where we'll see a lot of the Master of Masters and Luke Sora throughout the story. I think because the Master of Masters has been around for so long, there's a good chance that he already knows how to traverse between multiple realms and worlds, and he might have even found a way to basically exist and move around outside of all limitations of time and space. This is why we've been able to see him not only in the Realm of Light, but also both in the Shibuya side of Quadratum and the Shinjuku side of Quadratum. So there could be something within the Master's power or knowledge that enables this, but it's hard to say at this point whether he'd even share that knowledge with someone like Sora, or whether we see him reveal it at some point in a separate cutscene. Additionally, Luke Sora's abilities not only involve chance and fate, but also kind of deal with the concept of time, and maybe more broadly the intersection of time and space. This would explain why Luke Sora gave Sora a wild card after his defeat in the Keyblade Graveyard in Kingdom Hearts 3, and also why is Luke Sora we see as Yozora's driver in the secret movie at the end of Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind. So I think Luke Sora also being in Quadratum kind of points to the possibility that Sora might have a way to return from beyond the veil and back to the land of the living at some point in the Lost Master arc. Whether that might be made more difficult because of the Master of Masters or easier because of Luke Sword and his gifted wildcard remains to be seen. However, I do think that Sora's journey to return to the land of the living will not be an easy one and may even involve him having to make some difficult choices along the way. Alright, so because it seems like Kingdom Hearts 4 and the broader Lost Master arc is diving into this concept of life and death, I think that the way in which we see Sora and Riku appear in Quadratum is taking this concept into a really nuanced direction. I think that this arc is exploring life and death more so on a spectrum as opposed to absolutes. So while Sora is no longer on the same plane of existence as his friends and may not even be in what's considered the land of the living, he's also not in a form of permanent death or sleep. It actually appears to be the case that Sora is maybe somewhere closer to a purgatory, but still beyond the veil that separates the living from the non-living or a non-existence. But this also brings into question what the end in the Kingdom Hearts universe might actually look like. I think that the concept of a life's end in the Kingdom Hearts universe has evolved a bit from Kingdom Hearts 1 up to now, and we kind of got a pretty important hint as to what choices one has when their end of life comes. If we remember from the end of Kingdom Hearts Union Cross, players Cherithy explained to them that they essentially could either sleep with the Cherithy protecting them as Dream Eaters in the meantime, or their heart could join with another if they refuse sleep and in a sense continue to live on. So this is kind of reaffirming that there are multiple options along the spectrum of life and death in Kingdom Hearts. One's heart could fade and go into this permanent sleep, or one could essentially reincarnate by joining the heart of another. This is why it's suspected that Sora is actually player's third life, and what we're seeing is a reincarnated player's experiences. Along with these options, there's also the man-made options that might carry a body into the future, and data could be used in order to reanimate the person. This is likely what happened to Streletzia, as her body might have been placed into the lifeboat arc to carry to the future, but again, because we did seem to watch Streletzia's heart fade and Ian cross, the Strelitzi we see in the Kingdom Hearts 4 teaser trailer is likely reanimated from data and memories. And while Sora and Strelitzia's experiences are different, and they may have gotten to Quadratum in different ways, this could also explain why they're both on the Shibuya side of Quadratum, that's likely the side that's beyond the bill. This version of Quadratum again is likely closer to a form of purgatory, as opposed to a place that fully represents non-existence. And also, this is why I think the Disney worlds or IPs that will be used in Kingdom Hearts 4 and onward in future games would touch on these themes as well. There's a good chance that we'll see sort of newer IPs like Coco, but also older IPs that would fit these themes in the exploratory sense, like Treasure Planet. It would probably be best if the Kingdom Hearts games in the Lost Master arc used IPs that take on these themes of existence and non-existence and what may be in between to further flesh out the story in the Lost Master arc. I think the Lost Master arc has placed Sora in quite a unique situation in dealing with being in a place that's beyond the veil that separates him from the land of the living, but not in the place of permanent sleep. 
And I think that his story will mostly deal with him existing in this sort of purgatory along with the continued battle between light and darkness. But I want to hear from you, so let me know what you think about Sora's new situation in the comments below. If you want to explore some more Kingdom Hearts theories, I'll be linking another Kingdom Hearts theory video here in the end screen. And as always, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel if you enjoyed this video and want to watch more Kingdom Hearts content. And if there's anyone who may have questions about what to expect for the upcoming Kingdom Hearts games, be sure to share this video. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.